this is the biggest news that didn't get reported that we find out that there was no collusion between Trump and Russia, that it was created by Hillary Clinton in a campaign in July of 2016, that the CIA director John Brennan, that the FBI director Comey, and the president of the United States, Barack Obama, all knew about that and was never brought to Congress. Who, who has withheld this information? Credit to Director Radcliffe for that transparency of releasing it to the House and Senate. That was GOP House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on this program back in October of 2020. After then, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe declassified notes confirming that the Steele dossier was completely fabricated by Hillary Clinton's campaign. John Ratcliffe, the man who exposed this and other Russia lies, joins me right now. Uh, Congressman, uh, Director, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here, you know. and thank you for all of your work all of these years, John. Well, you as well, Maria. Uh, you've been an important part of getting this story out to at least some of the American people. And I'm glad that, you know, the developments that have happened this week, uh, that some of the American people are getting to see some of the information uh, that I saw as the director of national intelligence that was, was so important. And it was so important for you to get this out. There is a now a third indictment. We'll show those three indictments on the screen right now. And then I want to get into the two most important items that you declassified. You declassified these things before the election uh, of 2020. And you also uh, identified what specifically happened. Let's talk about John Durham's handwritten notes and what they say. This was one of the most important things that John you Brennan. declassified. John Brennan's, sorry, <laughs> listen to me. John Brennan's notes, and they were handwritten notes, and we're going to show them on the screen right now. Tell me what they said. Yeah, so let's start at the beginning. You know, we talked about this. I talked on this show with you about many things as a, as a member of Congress, but when I became the director of national intelligence, I said, listen, I want to see all of the intelligence about this supposed Russian collusion. And what I found was, and as you're finding out, is there was, of course, no Russian collusion between the Trump campaign uh, and Russia. But what I did see in intelligence documents, some of which I've now declassified, um, that there was collusion uh, involving the Clinton campaign and Russians to create a dossier. And so what John Brennan's notes reveal is, you know, we talk about these indictments. Igor Danchenko is now the third person to be criminally indicted in connection with the Steele dossier uh, for peddling something that, that was uh, known to be false to the FBI. But what's important here is John Brennan's own notes reflect and the, and the, the, the other document uh, that I declassified show that our intelligence community and our FBI knew this ahead of time, that Hillary Clinton, we had specific intelligence, that Hillary Clinton was creating a plan to vilify Donald Trump, to falsely accuse him of ties to Russia. And the intelligence community and the FBI knew this. And President Obama, Vice President Biden, were briefed by John Brennan and James Clapper and Jim Comey in early August of 2016. And John Solomon's earlier point was right. It all should have stopped at that point. Everything related to the Steele dossier was known to be untrue, but yet it was the predicate for moving forward with an unjust, unfair, and ultimately now everyone accepts a criminal, uh, criminally negligent investigation against uh, the Trump campaign. It was a crime to investigate yep. Donald Trump, because there was no probable cause, as FBI Director uh, Christopher Wray has admitted under oath, there was no probable cause for right. those FISA applications because they used the Steele dossier yeah. and it was fo and it was phony. So to underline John Brennan's notes, he has a he says there was an exchange and it shows us that Hillary Clinton has approved a plan concerning U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump and Russia and tying him to a scandal there. From then, then you have the CIA telling the FBI, this is the second most important document that you declassified. And this is what's called a CIOL. This is a counterintelligence operational lead. It's the CIA telling the FBI, we have this information. Hillary has cooked up this plan against Donald Trump. You need to investigate it. Tell me more. Yeah, so why it's um, un unfortunately what happened there is the CIA, because it can't use uh, our intelligence authorities uh, under the law, can't be used for domestic purposes. And, it, and then because this involved Hillary Clinton's campaign and people associated with it, a referral had to be made to the FBI. Unfortunately, as you see from that document, 
The referral went to disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok, who had uh, just weeks before receiving that referral, uh, had sent text messages promising to F Trump, to stop Trump, to make sure Trump would never become president. So as you, as you uh, said earlier, uh, the person who was supposed to be investigating the fake Steele dossier before John Durham ever got involved was Peter Strzok. And instead, what he did was bury that part of it as it related to Hillary Clinton and instead took a dossier that he knew to be false, used it to get a FISA application that he knew to be illegal, and used it to perpetuate an investigation that went on for four years that misrepresented everything to the American people. And that's why everyone associated with the Steele dossier, with its creation, its peddling to the FBI, and its use with by law enforcement authorities um, against the Trump campaign illegally, is in criminal jeopardy right now. So do you think that that is what John Durham is looking at? Do you think we will see I know that. potential indictments? Well, I, I know that. I know that, Maria, because as you as you know, Many of the documents that John Durham is using are documents that I gave him. So I declassified the documents that we've talked about, but I gave John Durham over a thousand other uh, documents that have not yet been declassified that I know uh, uh, include intelligence that goes specifically to um, this criminal activity that would be the basis for further indictments. And, you know, again, uh, what happened with the Steele dossier um, a grand jury is saying was criminal in nature, and I expect that all of the folks um, that are involved uh, with creating it and peddling it falsely uh, would be in, 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 in jeopardy. And I know that that's what John Durham is looking at. And as I talked about, um, you know, this goes to the to the highest levels of, of our government and in, in, uh, in, in the government agencies involved. And we have pictures of meetings in the Oval Office with President Obama and John Brennan, when we assume John Brennan told President Obama that he had this information. Uh, we're going to show those pictures right now of the Oval Office where President Obama, Joe Biden were briefed by John Brennan saying Hillary Clinton has cooked up this plan to en ensnare her opponent, Donald Trump. And this was way before uh, Inauguration Day of Donald August Trump. Of 2016. This was in 2016. Right. August of no, 2016. But those pictures, so, I'm saying, yeah, August of 2016, so was, right. And these three, pictures, we don't know if they were August, September, or October. Yeah. Well, the, the briefings occurred in August of 2016, so several months before the election. And again, um, Peter Strzok and folks at the FBI knew that the Steele dossier and was 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 a Hillary Clinton creation. And as the Danchenko indictment reflects, Maria, not only did Hillary Clinton cr uh, commission the creation of the Steele dossier. People that worked for her served as the sources for that information. PR Executive One, who has been identified publicly as a, as a gentleman named Charles Dolan, worked for Bill and Hillary Clinton, served as uh, state chairman of their campaigns, was appointed by Bill Clinton during his administration, and worked for the Russian Federation. He was a source of the information, some of the most salacious allegations um, against Paul Manafort and about Donald Trump and the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. So all of that was make-believe. It was bogus. And folks within the law enforcement community particularly were aware of that and yet used it illegally um, and peddled it uh, for a great period of time um, uh, for political for a political purpose, which is just um, uh, not only inappropriate, but as you're finding out, uh, criminal as well. And I expect there, I said a long time ago to you, Maria, I expect there'd be many indictments. I haven't backed off of that. Um, and I continue to think that there are going to be many indictments based on the intelligence that I gave to John yeah. Durham and that I have seen. Yeah, and, and what happens to all of your colleagues on the left who attacked you throughout the years that you were trying to educate and inform the American people? Adam Schiff saying that there was collusion in plain sight. He saw what you saw as a congressman. He saw what Devin Nunes saw as a congressman on the Intel Committee. How did he come out and go on MSNBC and CNN and say there was collusion in plain sight? And what about Mark Warner attacking you repeatedly as you were informing the American people throughout 2018, 2019, and 2020? Not, not only in that time frame as a member of Congress, but as the director of national intelligence, I briefed Mark Warner. I briefed Adam Schiff. I shared this information with them. 
And they knew that it took, they knew that it was true. They knew that I was being truthful, but they were concerned about winning a political election. They wanted Joe Biden to win in 2020. And wow. so that's the that's the reason that they came out um, the way that they did. Look, you know, uh, the intelligence speaks for itself. Grand juries uh, take the actions based on the intelligence that is an evidence that is provided to them. You know, at the end of the day, the yep. truth will defend itself. And it and it is in this instance. It's great to have you this morning, and thanks very much for all of your truth-telling, John. Good to you see bet. you. John Ratcliffe you. joining us this morning. We'll be right back. Stay with us.